Hi, welcome to our first week of C103 News of second quarter. I'm Andrew. And I'm Tessa. Andrew, now that we're a couple weeks into the second quarter, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm really excited. How about you? I'm good, but why are you so excited? I'm really pumped up about Black Friday. It's only a week away. I can't wait to go shopping and get some good deals. Black Friday sounds fun. Let's hear more about it from our news team. Oh. I saw it first. It matches my outfit. I don't care. I saw it first. Oh. A fight that started at Mall of America in the food court turns into an all-out melee, sending innocent shoppers running for cover. And cops trying to round up dozens of people involved in the brawl. Take a look. Yeah, you see that right? People caught on camera throwing chairs and running after each other. At one point, police tell us 10 fights were going on at the same time. Some stores even shut down for the night. Does this ever happen to you on Black Friday? Well, it's pretty average for everybody else. Guys, I'm here with Ariana interviewing her about Black Friday shopping. Uh, do you partake in Black Friday shopping? Yeah. Um, where do you go? The mall. Me too. <laughs> Have you seen any violence while you were shopping? Do you know the purpose of Black Friday? <laughs> What's the main item you're looking for to be on the sale? With sweatshirts on. Right, thank you. <laughs> Why don't you participate in Black Friday? Simply put, Black Friday is a symbol of everything that is wrong with this country. Uh, the rampant consumerism that leads people out into the world to sometimes fight to the death for meaningless items that simply will not do them any good. They buy these items to fill themselves with things that they don't need to distract them from their other from their lives. When really they should be out searching for community, happiness, people, good natured lives that fulfill them truly and deeply. But instead they're buying TVs and Doritos and Pepsi. So have you heard or seen any type of violence like driving past the mall or something like that? Um, I used to work at Menards and let me tell you, the lines around the store were unbelievable. Some woman actually almost died because she got ran over by a cart because the people were racing for a TV. I mean, it was insane. Yeah. Do you know the purpose of Black Friday? I think it's to f so people can fill their lives with useless items that will make them feel fuller, but really, they won't. You can't and take it with you, people. You can't take it with you. And if you were for Black Friday, what was what is one item that you would probably go for? A blimp. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi, I'm here with Ms. Nelson, interviewing her about Black Friday. Ms. Nelson, do you partake in Black Friday shopping? Every single year. Have you seen any violence while you were shopping? Um, I haven't, but last year I came really close to being uh, a victim of Black Friday violence, all because of a really good deal on a printer. But nothing happened, we were safe, everybody was okay. Do you know what the purpose of Black Friday is? What is the purpose of Black Friday? The purpose of Black Friday is it's the biggest shopping day of the year before Christmas, and they, live, they give a lot of employees the day off that day. So they have a lot of sales just to keep customers flowing through, and it's nice and easy and quick. I don't know if it's easy or quick. It's a long process for me, but I'll take your word for it. Okay. What is the main item you're going to be looking for this Black Friday? I never know what I'm going to buy on Black Friday until I get the ad. So I have a whole process, and I'm going to share it with you guys so that you can you know, learn from my experience. So what I do is I get the paper on Thanksgiving, and I lay out all the ads on my kitchen table, and I look through each one a couple of times, and I make a list of all the things I'm going to buy, and then I make a list of what the times that they go on sale so that I can be at the store at the right time. So whatever time those doors open, I am there until whenever I'm done. So maybe 10 o'clock until 3 a.m., just kind of depends. Makes perfect sense. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. For those of you going Black Friday shopping, I have a few tips. One, get to those stores early. Two, dress warm, but not too warm, and it gets hot in those stores. And three, beat the crowd. Be aggressive, not too aggressive, for what you want to buy. Be safe and good luck. Hearing about Black Friday makes me want to go. Do you know what you're getting? I don't know, but I heard that there's going to be some huge discount on books. So if you're a reader, 
better go get your favorite book. It's totally worth it. Books? Any type of books? Yes, well, mostly all. Unfortunately, there are no Black Friday deals on your books, though. There might not be any Black Friday deals, but you should definitely still order one. There are a limited number available. That's true. And if that doesn't convince you to order a yearbook now, maybe this commercial will. What will happen if you don't buy a yearbook? If you don't buy a yearbook, you'll regret it. And if you regret it, you won't have any memories. And if you don't have any memories to tell, you won't have any stories. And if you don't have any stories to tell, you'll be boring. And if you're boring, you'll eventually get lonely. And if you're lonely, you'll eventually become very sad. And when you're sad, you'll think of the day that you didn't get your yearbook. So get your yearbook before you regret it. Well, that convinces me. I think I'm going to order a yearbook this year ASAP before they run out. Well, you know, you can just use your phone and order yours online during class. That's at jostens.com. Really? I can order online on my phone? Oh. You can, but maybe not right now. <laughs> huh? Let's go to Mr. Z right now with a word about phones. Andrew, maybe you should listen up. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Oh, is this C60? Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, I'm on my cell phone. I, I don't have time for this today. What? Maybe next time. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Zubert. That was very um, informative. Maybe this next group can shed a little more light on the issue. Oh, cool. That's awesome. We've all probably heard about the new cell phone policy here at Rochester LC. We haven't heard how people feel about it. So we're going to go around and we're going to ask cell phone users and non-users about their opinions. Hey, we're here with Miss Molly. Miss Molly, I was just wondering, you obviously know about the new cell phone policy, and I was wondering since it started, have you had to take anyone's phone away? I have not, no. I, people have been uh, pretty understanding about the purpose of the policy, and I haven't really had a big issue. Would you take someone's phone away if it came down to it? I don't think I would take somebody's phone, but I would definitely tell them that they need to take their phone out of my room. Right. Well, thank you. Hi, Rochester ILC. I'm Brandon. I'm here with Alex to interview him about the new cell phone policies. Alex, how do you feel about the new cell phone policy? Um, honestly, I think if a kid's going to basically screw off in class, they're going to use anything. They could do it all on paper. They could blankly stare at anything. I think cell phones are just tools two years. Alright, I get where you're coming from. And then have you noticed a change in it since the beginning of this quarter? I've noticed a change in phones being put away, but I don't think the focus is any better. Like I said, they're just talking to other people now. Right, thank you for your interview. Yeah, you bet. How do you feel about our cell phone policy at this school? It doesn't really affect me. I, mean, I don't usually use my phone. If I want to contact someone, I just use Facebook. So. I don't do a lot of calling or anything. All right. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> and remember, guys, stay off your phones in class. It's really not that hard. You can use your phones when you're in the halls or at lunch. So have a good week. So after all this information we have heard from our teachers, Zbar, and our news team, I think it's pretty obvious. Stay off your phones. Instead of being on your phone, you should be doing something active, like playing basketball, soccer, or dodgeball. Dodgeball? Sounds fun. Did you know we have a dodgeball team? I'm on it. I did know that, but maybe some of our viewers didn't. Check out this story about dodgeball by our news team. Some of the rules of dodgeball. Um, we have to stay within the blue boundaries of the court. It's a volleyball court. 
There's three dodgeballs on each side of the court. You can retrieve the three on the right side of your court, and then you have to go back to the 10-foot line before you can attack the ball, or with the ball. Um, if you get hit, you are out. If somebody catches your ball, you are out. If you get hit and somebody else catches your ball, then you get to stay in the game and the person that threw it is out. And then you get to bring a new person in from your team. The first one out gets to come back in. All right. Thank you. So Alex, I understand that you've been at ALC Golden Hill for a while and that you've been on the dodgeball team for a while. How do you feel about that? I love the dodgeball team. I played last year and it was a great experience. I think everybody should play. Okay. Uh, how long have you been playing for? I've played for, I've been at the school for two and a half years now. So. And what are your strengths and weaknesses? I'm a great catcher and I'm a team player. All right, well, there you go. All right, we're Jonathan. How are you, Jonathan? I'm doing all right. How about yourself? Good. Yeah. boy. Why did you do the dodgeball team? Because I was, I was in the last year, I thought I was doing it this year, and plus I just love sports, and I don't like being lazy. <laughs> what do you think some of your strengths and weaknesses are? Uh, my strength is definitely throwing, um, and my weakness is catching, but throwing is my biggest strength. I can curve that ball. All right, are we going to win this year? Yeah. All right, there you have it. So, Larry, is this your first year playing dodgeball? Yeah, actually it is. Oh, yeah? How are your thoughts and feelings about this? Um, you know, I think it's a great way for our school to interact with other schools and, uh, you know, just get out there and have fun. You know? What are your strengths and weaknesses for playing? Um, you know, I really don't know my strengths or my weaknesses. I just know I have a really good spirit. So, you know, if I keep the good spirit going, I'm pretty sure we won't lose and whatnot. All right. Well, do you think that we'll win this year? Oh yeah, I think we'll win. All right, well there you have it. Thanks, Miss Pete, for all the hard work that you've been putting into this. I agree, Tessa. We should do our best and win the next game for us and show our appreciation. Hey, there they are! Oh God! I want to be a dodgeball player. Who do you want to be? I'm not sure yet. Well, let's see what advice Lois has about becoming who we want to be. Oh, and welcome to another segment of Life Tips. Furthering our conversation about who do you want to be, we have a visitor today. Let me introduce you to Jamie Johnson. Jamie is our transition counselor for RCTC. We're going to check in with Jamie. What are some of the characteristics a young person needs to have or get started on to be successful in that transition, leaving high school to college? Jamie, welcome. What Thanks. do you think? Thank you for having me. In order to be a successful college student, you have to have a burning desire really? to advance your career and to find a pro profession that you love and that you are going to get paid good money to do each day. You need to have good time management skills, complete all of the necessary paperwork to get to college, and I can help you with that on Thursdays while I'm here. So please come and see me so we can plan for your future. Awesome. Have a good day, and I hope you stop in and check Jamie Johnson out every other Thursday. She's here this week and every Tuesday evening at Rochester ALC. Have a good one. Thanks, Lois. That really puts me in the zone to think of who I want to be. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for another episode of C103 News after Thanksgiving break. Have a good break. Remember, stay fat on that turkey.